Freud pointed out the id, the inner child, the narcissistic little child who wants everything and wants it now. And then there's the superego or the inner parent that's our conscience that tells us be good, exceed, succeed, do well, work hard, don't rock the boat. And you have these conflicting parts of our unconscious mind. And when stress occurs, our inner child is saying, no, no, no. And our inner parent is saying, it's okay, just, just stick with it and be good. And there's that tension that rises in our unconscious minds. Sources of anger in childhood, sources of upsetness, sources of emotions in childhood are many. And everybody has them to some degree, of course. Some certainly more than others. But these things that occur in childhood live with us, as I said before. The childhood memories, the emotional memories live on. As we go through life, we have our personality traits, our conscience, our need to be liked, our need to be good, our need to succeed, our need to get along. And all these things impact significantly. And that's why I like working with people like, like you all. Because you're good people, you're nice people. You're the kind of people who want to do well, who want to um, succeed, who want to do their best. But that also creates some tension on ourselves, the expectations that we have to be good. And so those are some of the things that we'll work with as part of the course. You have the superego, the perfectionist. Here's a perfectionist convention. It's hard to fill out the form just right. You've got to get it right. And then as life goes on, the pressures of life, the pressures of life, things that happen in our lives. And everyone has pressures. And as time goes on, things get better, things get worse. How do we avoid the pressures of life? We don't. It's part of life. And even things that are good, you know, we get a, you get promoted. Well, that's great. You get promoted. But now there's new pressures to, to, to achieve to that level. We get married. That's great. You have a child. That's great. But there's more pressures. There's more resentments. I remember when my daughter was born. I was the happiest person alive. Couldn't wait to change those diapers, you know. I was just so happy. But then when she didn't sleep all night, I was a little resentful. I'm walking up and down the stairs, carrying her, trying to get her to sleep. Great child, but... And what am I supposed to do with that, with that resentment? I can't take it out on her. I keep it in. Builds up. And that's when my neck starts to hurt. And that's what happened to me when, you know, 20 some years ago now. Getting married, okay, now under new management. <laughs> Alice's divorce was, you know, wreaking havoc. Now I suppose you want everything tied up in a nice bow. And so it becomes a vicious cycle. Life experiences lead to pressures we put on ourselves. Life experiences lead to, lead to stressors that affect us. Uh, and the relationship between what we want and what we can have and what we can't have and, and how things go lead to turmoil in the brain, lead to turmoil in our minds. And sometimes we can't express it. We have to keep it in and we hold it in and it keeps in. But then it, it comes out in physical symptoms. And this is the model that Dr. Sarno created. The Resentment, rage, guilt, emotions that we keep a lid on that eventually come out in physical symptoms. And the unconscious mind will produce symptoms that sometimes are very telling. Very telling. There was a guy who I saw who uh, his sister had died suddenly, a young woman. He was in mourning. Within a, two or three weeks later, he was invited to a bachelor's party. He didn't want to go, but he went. So he goes to the bachelor's party. Well, bachelor's parties get out of hand a little sometimes. There was some Thai erotic massage or something going on. So here he is, his sister had died, and here he is at the bachelor's party. And what's he feeling? He doesn't want to be there. And he's feeling guilty. And he's feeling like he's doing something really wrong. And the next morning he wakes up with pain in his groin. Oh, pain in his groin. What an interesting thing. How much of a rocket scientist does it take to figure that one out? But how many doctors did he go to who no one figured it out? Neurologists, urologists, anesthesiologists, 
pain doctors. Until two years later, he comes to see me where I say, oh gee, <laughs> I can see what happened. It's not that hard to figure it out. The unconscious mind producing, punishing him in a sense for something that he felt that he did wrong. And then it lasts for a long time. So the onset of TMS can begin with a trauma, a psychological trauma like that, can begin with a physical trauma like a car accident, or it can begin with just bending over. But then uh, it begins to take a life of its own. It begins to get reinforced because we, as we don't, if we haven't got to the bottom of it, if we haven't figured out what's causing it, we assume it's uh, something wrong with the body. We go to doctors. The doctors tell us, yeah, there's something wrong with the body. The tests confirm a physical disorder. So now we, now we have a disease. And now there's no connection even ever made to the psychological issues that may be underlying the source of the symptoms. And then, most importantly, associations develop. And why, for, why some people with low back pain can bend over fine but can't sit down? or can run but can't walk, or can stand but not sit, or sit but not stand. And it doesn't exactly make that much sense. But what it is is that associations have developed. We've become conditioned to have the pain or the symptoms in certain situations and not in other situations. And just as Pavlov trained his dogs, he rang a bell and he gave them food, and pretty soon he rang the bell and they salivated. It was conditioning. It was a physical reaction to a bell, which doesn't really cause salivating unless it's paired to food. Well, Dr. Rader in 1975 did an experiment with mice. And what he did is he gave them a powerful immune suppressant called cytoxin. And he, they drank the cytoxin with saccharin to give it a flavoring. And their immune system went down because the cytoxin is a powerful immune suppressant. And then their immune system recovered and six weeks later, he gave them a bowl of saccharin. Just saccharin. What happened to their immune system? It went down. Just from saccharin. And so our, our, our bodies get conditioned. That's, and this study's been done in people as well. So we get conditioned to have physical symptoms in response to things which are just random. So... Over time, the symptoms of TMS can get better, they can get worse, they can move from place to place. And frequently what we find is the symptom may be bad in one area, but then it's worse in another area. But if we address the whole person, if we address the, the mind and the source of the symptoms in the first place, we can be better, we can be healthy. And in fact, the, 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 the most important point to make sure you understand is you are healthy. You are healthy. There's nothing seriously wrong. And pain begets pain. Once a pain occurs, it, the nerves get sensitized and go to the brain, and the brain gets sensitized, so it's more likely to develop pain. So smaller things can cause the same amount of pain. And so we really have to break this vicious cycle. So I'm going to wind up now. It's critical to recognize that this process, the connection between the mind and the body, is the cause of the symptoms. We have to recognize that it's perfectly normal to feel feelings, to feel rage and anger and guilt and fear and humiliation and shame. And once we begin to recognize these and know how to deal with them a bit better, as we're going to do in this class, we'll be better able to deal with those and less likely to have physical symptoms in response to them. We're also on the road to self-knowledge and prevention in the future. I've had people come to this class who didn't get better. But they've all been happy with the course because they learned so much about themselves. And sometimes they don't get better right away. It takes a while. Sometimes it's within days or weeks. Sometimes it's months. But there's a very strong chance you're going to be fine. There's a very strong chance you're going to be better. Psychologically, these kind of symptoms can also occur with, with, uh, with TMS. Anxiety, depression, OCD symptoms, phobias, things like this are very common, and frequently these get better too. I had a friend of mine who came to this class just for anxiety. Not just, <laughs> but for anxiety. 
not for a physical symptom, but for anxiety. And he used the same techniques we're using in this class, and he had dramatic improvement. And they often go together. So this is the program. There's six R's. The workbook that you have is we're going to be going through, and it describes these, and this is the program that you need to do. The first one is recognizing the disorder, and that's why I'm spending all this time giving this talk. So it's very clear to you that you understand this is what you have, TMS. You recognize that you're healthy, you're not sick, that you can be better, and then once that occurs, the rest is easy. Once that occurs, the rest is up to you to do the work for the healing. I can't heal you. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to get rid of this? Are you committed to doing the work to get rid of this? Is there some things holding you back? That's something we'll be working with as part of the course. Is there some reason where, well, maybe you don't mind having the headaches or the back pain or whatever it is? These are the things that, that you need to work with because you can heal yourself. I can't heal you. I can show you the way. I can give you the exercises. I can give you the workbook, the meditations, the writing, all that stuff. But you're going to do the work to get yourself better. You don't need to change your personality. You don't need to feel rage or anger. You don't need to express your unconscious. You just need to do this work. We like you the way you are. You don't need to change to become a different person. You just have to let go of some of the ways that we've been reacting, you've been reacting to the stressors in your life. Change those patterns. And this is a, a tremendous opportunity, a tremendous opportunity to change your life, the way you think about yourself, and your health. It's a really great opportunity, and it's done in a relatively short time. So, critical points to understand, there's nothing seriously wrong with the body. The pain and other symptoms are due to spasm of muscles, low oxygen, vasoconstriction, things that are caused by the mind and particularly the unconscious mind. And the total healing is possible and very likely by doing this work. People see me as a perfectionist, but if you scratch the surface, I'm insecure. And if you keep digging, you'll find a desire to please. And beneath that, a helpless little girl. And under that, pure rage. And beyond that, a hysteric. And finally, at rock bottom, you'll find a control freak who has back pain or other physical symptoms.